What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle and we're on the last wall of the biggest building we've ever built. This has got two overhead doors, 18 wide, 14 tall. We've got a walk door that's gonna go right here in the middle and I'm excited because this is a momentous occasion. It's, it's great to finally be to this point where I think 24 hours from right now, there's a really good chance that we'll have all this up here done. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit more than 24 hours. It's just after lunch on a Tuesday. By the end of Wednesday, I think we're gonna have almost all this done. So let's go ahead and jump right in this. I gotta get back into the framing mindset. I gotta remember what I was doing. We've got two jams that we've got to install, some extension posts so that it goes all the way up to the top. So I gotta do some math. And then we're gonna install our garage door header even though the header is not really carrying any weight, we always will use a structural end truss. There's a difference. So if you're gonna get one built, if you're gonna be building yourself, if you're gonna have a big doorway on your end, ask your engineer for a structural end truss, not just an end truss. What you'll notice if you're curious, up there, when you look and you see all those diagonals, they are the structure. If you just have horizontals, it's probably not a structural end, so there you go. It's a little bit more money for structure, but it means I don't have to worry about any weight on my doors, so it gives me peace of mind. And if a customer decides to blow out a wall and make the building longer, they can do that without having to worry about that truss not being able to support uh, the roof weight. So, all right, big dog, you ready, Greg? Pump that up. It's always important when building a big header and stuff that you have your posts laid out somewhat square. That way uh, when it goes and gets built and you got all these nails, you don't put it up and you got to tweak it. Um, got to try to make sure it's close, but it's going to be a little bit tricky because I got to line up something 20 to the edge. I'm um, 18, four and a half. And I need to go downhill. So what I do is I always mark the inside of my header and I mark top and bottom so I have a visual is this board being installed squared up to my post or not? And now that I've got everything kind of measured out, my line is lining up right there with the inside of my column. Greg, <laughs> it's not intentional. I'm not trying to flex in front of you. I, I thought the shot was a little bit past. Yo, even though these are not a structural header, we're still gonna double up a two by 12 on the inside and that's mainly so that we can have a good place to support all of our door track, door opener, uh, springs, all that hardware for this overhead door. So that's the purpose of the two by 12 doubled up. Top looks really straight. The bottom, that knot kind of has to bump out. Mm hmm. Good.
Dang it. These are going to be 15 and a half inch shy. I didn't add my 15 and a half inch heel. Be all right. On the end truss, we got, we'll be all right. Dang, perfect. So Greg, see over here? It can't it can't fold because it's gonna eventually hit the forks. Yeah. But over here, Greg, it's got to get pushed in. Yeah, it's catching on that gird up there. Almost. Atta boy. think this freaking board was made like two months ago man hopefully it didn't change like dimension over the course of its life what does that say plus three eighths I better do this so it doesn't pull. This is really heavy, dog. For you? It ain't that heavy. A little more. Oh, right there. Okay. further you Greg can you grab the header uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't go anywhere the forks yeah. are up I gotta get no Greg it, hold on okay there's, there's one more screw I gotta get out of here I was gonna say I didn't think it was undone that's why I was confused yeah I think it's on the okay so my question is Greg can you grab you're too far away let me just let me just see if I can tie, side, side tilt the telly. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Is it on? Yes, it's on. I had to check though, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of fuel, man.
My screw now. You missed your opportunity. What's up guys, back here in the morning, getting some framing done real quick. We got grade board on, I got this walk door going in, Greg's getting blocking on our garage doors, and we're gonna get this wrapped up and move right into trimming everything out, installing this door. We just did a walk door install, so we're not gonna get heavy in that, and we did some of these trims. So we're just gonna move through this, get into uh, putting the steel up on this last side. It's a gorgeous morning too. All right, Greg's finishing up door framing. I got the walk door installed, ready to go. So I'm gonna move on to jam trims. And uh, like I said in the previous video, these are all custom trims that we had made. Makes our job easier and gives our clients building a better look in my opinion, because it's seamless one piece. And if done properly, they look really good. If not done properly, yeah, they don't look great. So we gotta do the best we can to do a decent job. And the reason they don't look great sometimes is all based on framing because wood is not perfect. Metal, however, wants to be very perfect. I mean, it's straight as the bends are, right? And so when you start flexing the metal because the lumber's not perfect on the jam, that's when you get oil cans. So we make them slightly bigger than they should be. So hopefully when they go on, they're not super tight under stress and then giving us an oil can look, which is less than desirable. Bends on these guys. This is gonna be the top of my door trim, the top of my jam. So I'm giving myself a bend around so that it's, uh, it looks like a nice corner when it all comes together. Also, if you're looking at this and like, man, what is wrong with this trim? This trim has a uh, protective film on it that we leave on until it's installed. Helps reduce any scratches. So it's, the trim's not a problem. It just has a film on it that looks like there's a problem with the trim. All right, just tack that one up. And let's see. 44 inches. That sucked in there. You know, I was thinking about this, guys. A bunch of the custom trims that we do on our buildings and you wanna know those dimensions and you're gonna do a building yourself and you wanna get them. I actually have these drawings in my material list for my building plans. A lot of you don't know that I sell some building plans. That's because I never talk about it. I'm a horrible promoter of myself. Uh, I like to promote tools and other cool things on the construction site, but not my own things. So 
RR plans are available. They are some of the past builds on the YouTube channel. So if you followed some of the builds, you like them, and you wanna understand more in depth on how we put together the project, how these trims are bent, you can buy some of that stuff. I'll put a link down below, I usually do, but I don't talk about it much. So, you know, sometimes people are like, dude, I didn't know you had plans. Well, this is me telling you, you can go buy them. They're super affordable. I just put them out there because I, I get asked all the time and it was like, you know what? I'm just gonna make some of these uh, available to people. And if you want them, great. If not, no skin off my back, but they're there to help people out. So that's all four uppers. Now I'll get these bottoms cut and then we'll get to the top. There we go. All right, door trim's done, base trim on, time for Wayne's coat. Before we do that, before we put any more steel up on this building, we're gonna verify, I think Greg said we wanna move this wall over, we wanna rock it just a little bit to try to plumb it up just a little better. Believe it or not, we've never had a chain or a brace on this end wall, so. Ball, that's all, all you're gonna get, man. I ain't got no problem with that. I got no problem with that, dude. You're literally talking about in 12 feet, maybe, maybe an eighth, maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. Do we typically take the J to the bottom of the base or the bottom of the 
I go bottom of the vase trim. Oh, I went bottom of the trim. That's fine, dude. As long as you do it all the same, I don't care. Yeah, it's all the same. There is no right or wrong answer. It's all the same. Oof, three pieces. So the siphon leg on a piece of steel is a little bit longer. And so therefore, when he comes into the corner sometimes, you just gotta rip off that leg. It's got that siphon leg that sticks out there. And it really depends on the dimension of the building. And we were about a quarter inch this way then perfect, which meant our steel. I mean, you can kind of, well, it's not, actually it doesn't look bad to me. The center of this rib is right up the edge, but this is an inch and a quarter and this trim is only one inch, so when we put our trim over here, that leg is sometimes in the way. You can see down here, actually, it's, uh, it's a little bit better. It doesn't stick out past this trim. It was sticking out. That's why I cut it off. So I'm just, I, don't know how, I don't know how important that is to know, but if you get to that situation, and you're like, oh, why doesn't it work? It's three foot increments. Well, sometimes you gotta cut that leg off. And it is lunchtime. I'm hungry. You know what they say, if you measure three times. It ought to be right once. It's gotta be right. If you get the same same answer every time. Let's go, man. We got, we got a lot of work to do this afternoon, Greg. There's a chain up here. I'll have to go take that down. Right? That can come down now. <clears throat> Look at that, I got lucky, the measurement worked. It's amazing what happens when you measure three times. Beautiful. There, I gave you a middle. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Okay. Get me in here, down here. Yeah, go ahead and roll her in a little bit. make it work. Looks pretty dang good down here. All right, we gotta go above the doors now. Also, don't judge me. These were in my truck and they're the only sunglasses I got and it was, it's really bright out there on this metal. And don't ask me for a link. I think these were like $1 glasses that came from a promotional deal or something. I don't know.
Eight two and an eighth. Eight foot two and an eighth. Yeah. That's kind of weird. I'm gonna do eight foot two. Okay. That works too. Five, six. I'm trying to match our punch rows with our side steel that we've got sitting down on our base trim, but now we're over top of the door. And typically we'll just snap lines through, but we're thinking that we're probably good enough to um, line up our punch rows. That way it's all done right here. Nice and easy, and Greg don't have to worry about it up in the air. 2242, right, Greg? Yes. 2242. And if it all works out, this should be quite easy. I'll get these cut, send them up to Greg. We'll get across and then get through this uh, door, which really, it's kind of downhill, really. So when you've got a rib super close in your trim like this, we gotta cut the rib low, but then we also need to have a notch for our J channel so that it uh, we get water away from the uh, away from going into this rib. So you'll notice I got this mark here. This is the top of my trim, but this is the cut that's gonna be high so that my J channel will tuck in, overhang, and then water will come out and over onto this panel. So if this doesn't make sense to you, uh, hang tight. Perfect cut. So I'm just cutting the rib uh, so that it can go underneath my J, but I'm gonna make sure that I leave this here and you'll see when it goes up. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, you yeah, you get to hurry though. This is heavy. Mm -hmm. It's not heavy, it's awkward. You could say it's heavy. No, no, the weight is not the issue. The fact that my shoulders are pretty shot. Oh, man. All right. You want to take it inside the door jam? I got some trim right there we gotta get up over. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm pushing up. Wait, gotta get over that J. Look at that. Look at that. Okay, you gotta kinda have the have it, dude. Yep. Okay, it's all you. All right. Rounded edges always, always be sliding in nicer. Cut no! the J! No! <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, now wait a second. Hold on. You got it? I marked it. I just got in a hurry. Forgive me? Hmm. In time, will you forgive me, though? Maybe. That's what I needed, dude. Freaking legend. Oh, my screw fell out.
Last one. All the steel is up we got to screw it off and then we're going to probably finish up this video guys with getting these outside corner trims done and that will be the whole thing that's not going to get done tonight it'll change into tomorrow but we'll do the screwing and we'll get on these corner trims tomorrow morning uh, that's a lot of work right it's a lot of work all right so we got all the steel up and i'm going to start here in the back of the building i'm going to get our corner trims on You'll notice we always try to plan this so that, if possible, we've got a nice tight rib over rib. So this is a nice, I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's pretty decent, but we're going to come in and we're going to put our corner trim over. It cleans it up, obviously makes it very weather protectant. And I'll show you how we do this. I've seen it done a lot of different ways. I, I feel like this is the cleanest way. If you guys have another way to do this, I'd love to see it because uh, I like to learn things. But I've got two pieces, so I'm gonna try to make this look like one piece, but I can't go through this trim with just one piece very effectively. So what I need to do is do some cuts so that it sits down nice on my base trim, and then I want it to tuck under this trim, but also over the trim, and you'll see why here in a little bit. So first thing I need to do is just make a couple one inch cuts on my bottom leg. That way it fits over top of my base trim. I really do love the Martinez Micro for doing metal trims. A regular speed square just gets, it's just so big, it's really unnecessary and it's awkward sometimes. So I really do like having this Micro, which you know, you don't have to go to a Martinez, you can get a, there's other brands that make these smaller Micro squares. All right, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. And what this allows me to do is take my trim and I set it on the base trim, but it goes all the way down. So it cleans up this corner. So when we do those nice little wrap around one piece corners, honestly, it's not really for the aesthetic. It's more for instead of having to cut a piece and then start a new piece, just make a couple cuts, wrap it around. And I think it's a quicker, more efficient way to do it. Uh, but now this trim is going to cover all that. And what I need to do now is get this detail up here figured out. So what I do is I just set it where it's going to go, make sure it's close to where I like it. And then I'm going to mark where the bottom of my trim is right here. And then I'm going to mark just underneath this trim edge here. This is just an eyeball, but if you need to get a whole lot of square to do this effectively, go ahead and do that. So first I'm going to cut in where the top of my trim is, and what I'm doing is this leg is gonna go underneath this trim, and then this face of this trim is gonna go come out over top of my trim. And I'm using my greens here specifically because this cut right here. You can see how it bent this under? Okay, now I'm gonna pull my reds in here, and I'm gonna do a like an eighth inch cut away from that cut. So you see what it did to this piece of metal here? It bent it. And I'm just gonna take it and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna rip it off, I'm just gonna roll it. What that does is it gives me kind of a nice clean little bend there instead of a raw cut if I were to break that metal. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. 90% of the time I am using a snip based on the action that I want the snip to form, not just because it's red or green or some people say right-handed or left-handed. That actually doesn't really matter which way I want the metal to go. And not always doesn't matter. All right, now if I did this right, what I should have is I should be able to tuck this underneath. And this is gonna go right here. So now, 
This is clean going up. This is coming over top. So let's go ahead and get this fastened into place and then we'll go on to the second piece. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll get it where I like it. And I'll just throw a quick punch in here. So it kind of stays put. Now that I got this piece on, I need to figure out my cut up top, my measurement. The good thing is I know this sheet of steel is 13 foot half inch. So that cut up top is 13 and a half. And then I need to figure out the leg that extends up and goes underneath my soffit there. So math is my friend. I know the pitch of my roof shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Typically I might make all four of my corners up on the sawhorses and then go install them all. But I just was gonna quick do this one in the back corner, make sure I liked it and showed you guys doing the process. And then I'll go, if I like everything, I'll go mass produce the other three, call it a day. All right, so we're looking at 13 foot, half inch. I know that is my sheet. And then I've got a two foot overhang and I've got a three and a quarter pitch. So if you have two foot, three and a quarter times two, that's six and a half. That should be about what my rise is gonna be. Now, I've learned it's never that. It always is a little bit less. So I'm only gonna go six and a quarter. I've got a one inch trim up top for this piece to go into. So you can cut it shy, it's gonna be fine. So what I'm going to do is add six and a quarter to this dimension of 13 and a half. It'd be six and three quarters. Okay, so what this looks like is I've got this here is my side side wall. What I'm going to do is take my square. I'm going to give myself a nice straight line. So this is going out. This is going up my two foot overhang. That's the six and a quarter. Okay. And then what I've got is I've got my three and a quarter pitch over here. So we're gonna do our three and a quarter pitch. Now, let's hope this is all good. Go ahead and cut it out. So this is one of those situations where the, the snip doesn't matter too much, it's just comfortable, because this there's really no specific way I want my metal to go. All right, so this should, I hope, it'd be embarrassing if it didn't, it should go up in here. Come on, get in there. Okay, so now I sit down on this. What this does for me is from the road, I get a nice, one piece look. Obviously the joint is here, but your eye isn't looking up and seeing really a joint. It's kind of below your eyesight. Also, I see a lot of times guys will tuck this piece entirely underneath here and then set this piece on top of this trim. And then this trim goes through here. I don't like that unless you're using a similar colored trim. I just think it looks a little tacky, but it is easier than having to do this look right here. So I understand that, but this is just our preference. Pretty darn simple. Where did my punch go get like one shot at this okay there we go now when doing these trims kind of like if you watch the video doing the gable trims it's the same piece of metal it's the same bend as what's up on our rake right i always try to try not to stress it and stretch it out and what i mean by that is you don't want it to get stressed this way. So you don't want to stretch the, the screw and pull the metal because it'll put tension on this and then this is going to get bubbly going up. Obviously straight corners matter, but I'd say even more so it matters how you put your screws in. So I'm not going to do this screw yet. We're going to leave this here. I'm going to go up top, make sure that I like where my screws placements and the trim is. 
and then we'll work it down. And I always hit the middle of the big piece first with my screws. That way I'm not working out an inconsistency all to the last screw. That also is when you have oil canning. So if there's some stress that works out of this piece, I'll be able to fix it with this last screw right here a little bit. All right, so now you can kind of see what was going on here. That flat cut, then this, cut, this little like leg that I had left is just to close this off here where um, we're going out over our rib. There's just a little bit of extra dimension here. So that's what this is taking care of. It's not quite an inch. I usually go three quarters to seven eighths. This is a little, I'm a little bit tight here. I might go a little bit less. I want seven eighths here and I might do, might do three quarters on my next one because it doesn't have to be perfectly tight. Whoa. I don't know if you guys just saw that. Did you catch that? Freaking moths just come out at my face. Two of them. They were doing something up there. I don't know. It was a little bit early in the morning. This is usually a little scary for me right here, and I'll tell you why. Because I know there's a big gusset plate right here. So, because I know that there's a gusset plate here, I've learned to just go ahead and put a punch just to be safe. I can't tell if I hit one or not, but if you hit a gusset plate, it can mess up your trim a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lift down towards the middle. And this is where, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda squeeze this together, kind of rolling and making this, this plane here, this, uh, this section of the trim, the face. I don't want it to be flat, I want it to get a little bit of a pucker to it. And I'm also pointing my screw into the trim. That'll help kind of with that pucker, and if I go on an angle this way, it will stretch the trim out. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. And you also see when I put the screw in, I pull it back out. That's also to release some tension going through the hem. So that's not bad, it's not bad. All right, we'll move this out of the way, put our last screw where that uh, punch was, and that's, that's corner trim. Now, typically if I pull that punch and that steel moves on me, I know that it's under some sort of tension and then I can put the screw where it falls naturally versus back into this hole, but it, it didn't move, it was perfect, so I'm just gonna go ahead and screw it. There we go. So in my opinion, this is a super nice, clean, one-piece look. Using standard trims, there's nothing special about this trim. Um, and that's one out of four. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up these other three corners. That's gonna be it for this building. That's gonna be all the steel on the exterior done. All right, guys, we did it. We got this done. I mean, we are, we're 99% done. All the steel is now on the exterior. I got all the trims done. We've got overhead doors are gonna be getting installed probably next week. That's not on me, that's the Rainer Door Authority here out of Dixon, Illinois. Same people that did the shop doors for me. We got gutters, that won't be us either. That'll be uh, our buddy Scotty, AR Gutter Services. He's gonna come put a six inch gutter on this building with downspouts. And then yes, a lot of people are wondering, what are they gonna do inside? Are they gonna do all this concrete? Eventually, it's not gonna get done right away. They're gonna kind of get into the building, see how they're gonna use it, I do believe. And let's be honest, there's 30,000 square feet of concrete. So it's gonna cost a lot of money and they're probably gonna do it in some stages. So I won't be getting that all on video. This is kind of where this, this build is gonna wrap up. I am gonna do one more video after this where we're gonna talk about permanent bracing. I've seen some of the comments. People are like, I can't believe you put this building up without you know, a bunch of bracing everywhere. First off, we use chains and that's another, another story. I don't have a bunch of lumber braced up on this building, but now I'm going to do some permanent bracing now that the building is where we want it and it will give it some extra structure uh, throughout its life. And I wanna take you guys through the different types of that permanent bracing. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you can uh, catch that video later. 
But if you enjoyed this series, definitely appreciate a big thumbs up. Maybe drop a comment what your favorite part of this series was. And guys, we're under 40 days on this build, Greg and I. I think today is day 39, if my math is correct. And uh, you guys, it's a lot of work. I'm grateful that Cole came out, you know, a handful of days. I'm really glad that Zach, Greg's brother, came back to work with us for a couple of days on the roof. And uh, even more importantly, I'm glad that this build is done because this has been a extremely physical job. You know, when you do something once, it can be hard, but when you have to do it like a hundred times because of the scale of the building, it definitely wears on you. I'm getting older, not younger. And, uh, but there was a great challenge. We now can check off the biggest building that we've ever built being a 304 by 96. Glad to share with you guys. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot more coming. There's always projects. We got houses, barndos, some shop additions, tons of different jobs coming down the pipeline. So you definitely want to be subscribed, stay tuned. And hey, we're going to catch you on another video.